Hello Internet, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio by learning how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. As many of you subscribers know, Project Rebuild is really starting to come together. In the last video, I covered making all the shapes for the false wall that will cover the subwoofer box within the trunk. In this video, we're going to be talking about shaping all those pieces using the router. I'm also going to talk about molding those insert shapes into the false wall using body filler. Finally, I'm going to be talking about how I hide some of the mounting hardware that actually secures the false wall to the subwoofer box. In the last Fabrication Friday episode, I actually talked about a lot of these different mounting solutions, so you're going to see some real world examples of how they're done. In fact, in this video, I'm going to be using neodymium magnets to actually secure one of the inserts on the false wall. Let's get started. begin shaping my various pieces on this project, I'm going to start with using this 63 degree chamfer bit. A list to all the tools and materials used in this video are linked down in the video description. I'm using this bit on the top cover piece that will help to hide some of the hardware that secures the false wall to the subwoofer box. Using different router bits allows me to add dimension to the panel. Once wrapped in vinyl, these hard lines will add visual appeal. Something else we need to take into account during the shaping process is how the upholstery materials will impact the fit of our various pieces. For this circular insert and the other inserts, some of the vinyl I'm using will need to wrap around the back side of the wooden piece, so I need to remove some of the wood in order to account for the vinyl material. Here I'm using a rabbiting bit to cut a step onto the back side of the pieces so that we can tuck the vinyl into it later when we upholster them. I'm also doing this on my main template shape. I only have to do this to the inside of these shapes because only the inside cutouts will be visible. The outer perimeter fits into another shape so the material can be cut flush as the lower lip will not be seen. Now to add some dimension and shaping to the front of these pieces, I'm using a 45 degree chamfer bit. I adjust the height of the bit so that I can get the chamfer cut as deep into the wood as possible. This will make wrapping the vinyl onto the piece later a lot easier as it won't be as likely to wrinkle in tight corners. I also apply a chamfer to the back side of the main part of the false wall so that you cannot see the rear edge of the wall. It appears thin from the viewing side. This will allow the wall to seem to be spaced further away from its mounting surface, creating sort of a floating effect. Another material we need to account for is the metal mesh that I'll be using over the openings of the false wall. The metal mesh is thicker, so I'm going to be going deeper into the wood, and I also want to give myself more of a stepped surface for it to mount to, so I do this with a much larger rabbiting bit. In order to add some additional detail onto the false wall, I'm using a bull nose bit to add two slots onto each side. If you haven't already, be sure to watch VBL 10, where I talk about the inspiration for the shapes on this panel. These slot design features are also inspired once again by the OEM door panel. Now that all the router work is complete, I'm ready to start applying body filler to shape the panel around the inserts. I prep the inserts by wrapping them with protective tapes. The top insert features two layers of foam tape to allow for proper gapping of the vinyl. The large insert only has one layer of normal masking tape, but I'll be using a rabbiting bit later to shrink it down to account for vinyl thickness. The inserts are temporarily held in position with double-sided template tape. For molding in the inserts, I'm using stainless steel smart spreaders, normal spreaders, and Duraglass body filler. Duraglass is a fiberglass filled filler that has plenty of strength despite being applied in such a thick application. I apply it along the edge of the insert using the normal spreader and then come back and run a profile using the smart spreader from Mobile Solutions. This spreader gives me a perfect profile that minimizes the sanding that I'll need to do. After filling between the two inserts, I use a normal spreader to finish the curve. You also want to make sure that you always come back before the filler dries and remove any of the excess. Taking care with the application of the filler can save a lot of time during the sanding process. Your filler should be very smooth and close to its final shape. A tool that really helps with the sanding process is this foam sander. Again, link down in the video description. The foam sander allows me to sand evenly on the curved surface. This really helps to make a huge difference in the finished product as it helps prevent any waviness in that surface. Foam sanders come in a variety of profiles, so you can use different ones for shaping different areas of the insert. 
Now I don't want to bore you too much with the sanding process, but just step your way through the grit sizes. I usually start around 60 for very rough shaping, then 150, then 240 in preparation for vinyl. Be careful not to over sand any waves into the filler. If you do over sand, just add filler and fill any holes as needed. Once the filler is sanded smooth, I used a rabbit bit off camera to shrink the main insert down by 1 16th of an inch. This allows space for two layers of vinyl. Now you can see that the main insert is completely constrained on all sides, but the top insert is not, so I need to determine a way to hold it in place. The top insert will also serve the function of helping to hide two holes that are used for bolting the false wall to my subwoofer enclosure. Let's get to work mounting some neodymium magnets to hold all of this together. I start with determining a good location for the magnets and then use a center punch to mark where the hole should be drilled. I then drill a small hole. This hole allows me to place the top insert back into position and then from the back side of the false wall, I can transfer that hole location to the top insert. It is critical that this is done so that the magnets are perfectly centered with each other. If they are off center, the insert will not hold in the correct location. The hole will also help to serve as a centering location for our Forstner bits. A Forstner bit allows me to make a very shallow hole in a workpiece. In this case, my magnet is only 1 16th of an inch thick, so I'm using this Forstner bit in a drill press to make a hole of that depth. Do take note that it's probably a good idea to do this on a test piece to verify the depth before doing it on the final insert piece. I make this hole on both the false wall and the top insert piece. To secure the magnet, I apply CA glue to the surface of the hole. I then apply the activator to the magnet itself and then press the magnet into position. Make sure that you account for the polarity of the magnet so that they attract one another and not repel. Now the top insert will simply click into place. The magnets are extremely strong and easily hold this insert in position. If you enjoyed this video, please take a quick second to smash that like button and share the video link on a forum or social media. This really helps me to make more videos. A special thanks goes out to Ivor, Emmanuel, Rory, Eddie, Truman, and Jerry, and all the rest of the Patreon support team for helping support this video. Their pledges for the video help me to purchase the body filler, Forstner bits, magnets, and all the other materials used in this video to help teach this step of the build. To learn more, click the Patreon link down below. Stay tuned in to the next step of Project Rebuild where I'll show you how we form the metal mesh for the inside of the inserts. Thanks again for watching.